of scared. Yeah. Why does Mike Tyson win this fight? Because of Mike Tyson. It's a dark place in there, that ring. A lot of things can happen. Yes. Touch right hand come good. Yeah, beautiful. Mike is the baddest man on the planet. Raphael is the baddest trainer on the planet. He wanted to go back to his roots, and now he's sticking with him. Raphael, he's like the, the bad guy. He keeps it going. He, he pushes it. Forward. He's doing his thing. If everything was easy and it was just a cupcake walk to the top, it's not beautiful that way. I'm ready. I'm gonna upset the world. People don't realize how much is sacrificed in the camp, and Jake sacrificed a lot to get ready for the last fight on top of releasing his the new brand W. And so he needed to bring. And so we took a month off, got right back in there, and now we're getting ready for Mike and uh we're not as heavy as we were before, which is a plus for us. I didn't want us to go back up, but you can guarantee you could be ready to fight. There's a fundamental difference between me and Jake. He the manufactured killers. Television and papers made him a killer. He's manufactured. I'm a natural born killer. That changed, that's the difference. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Oh, you know. Can <laughs> Dude, he talking stupid shit all the time. <laughs> First of all, no one else can do this but me. Okay. I believe. And um, like you said, this is the greatest boxing match in the history of boxing. And it's because I'm a part of it. I um, grew up around boxing since I was seven years old. Mike Tyson was probably my one of my greatest heroes in sport. I just don't want to see him in the ring again at 58. That's it. I don't want to watch one of my all-time favorite fighters, one of my heroes, I guess, in a boxing ring at 55 years of age, physically a shell of what he once was. Well, I'm allowed to say, oh, I don't, I don't really want to see it. I don't want to see Mike Tyson in that fight, but a lot of people will see it. As the boxing world prepares to witness one of the most exhilarating bouts of this year, many experts and professionals belonging to the combat field, including Eddie Hearn, are engaged in alarming the world about the dark nature of this fight and the serious repercussions it will have on the veteran fighter. Being a boxing geek and a diehard Mike Tyson fan, Eddie condemned this fight, calling it a horrible joke to a champion like Mike, who now has to come out of well-deserved retirement to fight an immature and cocky fighter like Jake Paul while simultaneously endangering his health. I just don't like it. It just makes my skin crawl. A geezer at that age putting on his shorts and, and in a changing room, robing up to go out after everything that he's achieved in the sport to fight Jake Paul. Yeah, you're asking the wrong guy. I'm a hardcore boxing fan. He's one of my heroes. I find it very sad. But it's a big event. I understand people are going to watch it. And uh, it's entertainment, I guess. But for uh, someone that idolized the guy growing up, yeah, not the best day. You think Jake Paul gets any credibility if he beats Mike Tyson? He's 58 years old. Blasting Jake for taking up this fight, Eddie emphasized that no matter the slight progress that he has made in the sport so far, for him to accept such a ludicrous offer is atrocious, and goes on to show that he is only looking for fame and clout, not legacy and prestige. He's training, he's sparring, he's dedicating himself to the sport, but fight a fighter. Don't fight a 55-year-old man who's shot and used to be one of the greatest fighters of all time. Just a different world, isn't it, you know, that we live in, this new generation. But good luck to him, you know, I'm sure it'll do good numbers and hopefully Mike Tyson doesn't get hurt because it will be a travesty for boxing. With all these aspects, Eddie also questioned the authenticity of the fight and how events like these are just orchestrated for the sake of ignorant and bland entertainment because they hold no real value in terms of contributing anything meaningful to the sport. No. So they're looking at it from a different angle. They're looking at it for numbers. They're looking at it for, you know, I think if you genuinely care about the sport and the history of the sport, and particularly the legacy of one of the greatest fighters of all time. However, understanding the unmistakable lure of financial gain, Eddie stated that though he might not appreciate fights like these, one thing that must be addressed is the fact that these fights are always the most lucrative and marketable considering their distinctive nature. And listen, commercially, I get it all. It's gonna do great numbers, right? People are gonna make a lot of money. But Circus sells. 
So I know it's going to do good numbers and etc. So I wish him all the best, but it's just not for me. Like it actually, like it, it, it makes me feel a bit sick having to watch that. Sharing the same opinions as Eddie, notable coach and trainer Robert Garcia called this a sham fight, which is just for a show due to its hollow nature. According to Robert, even though this fight will end up making a fortune for the fighters, bouts like these should not be condoned or encouraged among the young and aspiring athletes. I think the stadium's gonna be full, so it's a great event, but honestly, you know, to me, it's 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 just a show. It's it's like 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 people paying their tickets and paying pay per view to watch Royal Rumble. It's the entertainment. I don't really think it's it's gonna be a real fight. I, I wouldn't be surprised that they've been stag <laughs> staging it together, you know, just to put up a good show. Explaining his statement, Robert divulged into Mike's career, especially his last couple of fights, which were not up to par with the champion that he was. Utilizing this for the sake of argument, Robert added on how if Mike was not able to perform well during that time, how can people expect him to outshine a younger Jake now? Tyson's almost 60. If we go back to his last, to his last, uh, fights when he was still a professional fighter his last couple of performances were not very good performances and i don't even know how long that how long ago that was you know and and that's 20 years he was 20 years younger and he didn't perform very well his performances weren't very well you know he got beat by guys that were nobodies and shouldn't have beat him so what makes us think that that 20 years later He's going to be a monster like he was in his early 20s, knocking everybody out. There's no way. Johnny Nelson, who is a former boxer and someone as old as Tyson, stated how even though there is no doubt that Mike is a phenomenal once-in-a-lifetime talent and no match to Jake Paul considering his skills and boxing IQ, he is still old and much slower, which can prove to be his biggest downfall in this fight. Let's, let's just not be silly. We know Mike Tyson, what he, who he was, what he had achieved, what he did. We know what Mike Tyson... And, and Jake Paul, it's like day and night. Uh, we also know Mike Tyson's the same age as me right now. And if you get in with somebody that's not half, got half, even a quarter, even 1% of the, of the experience and knowledge you have about the game, we know Mike Tyson's got all of that and more. But the one thing you, you we as humans can't control is time. Uh, youth, you've got youth against against an, a, a, an older man that hasn't got the pace. So if you've got someone that's running rings around you, Mike's never going to have the energy level to, to keep up with him or, or, or to, to manhandle him. So unless he gets one shot in and, and Jake Paul's stupid enough to try and talk to toy there with him, all he takes with one shot. But he has the speed on Mike, he has the youth on Mike, he has the fitness on Mike. Meanwhile, addressing Roberts and other professionals' comments about him not being up for the challenge, Mike emphasized that it is absurd that people are highlighting his last couple of performances before retirement now, knowing well enough that he was not in the right mental state. You know, time changes. I was a different person back then. I was doing different things back then. And um, it's time for me to come back. I was a different person then. I was using, I, you know, I was using narcotics, alcoholic back then, and I'm not that person anymore. And I see, and I see a better picture of myself. I see light. I see the world from a different perspective now. Sarcastically calling out to all those who have been undermining him for his age, Mike stated how though he is grateful for this incessant concern, he is not a feeble old man who is going to yield in the face of adversity like people seem to think that he will. I don't know. Thank you very much for being concerned. But I am. Hey, man, move. And let you say 58 shit. Sit your old ass down. No, I want to fight this guy and kick his ass. Now, even though Mike is confident about his chances at winning this fight and seems to be turning it up at the gym, the public perception seems to be anything but stable, which is evident from the divide between the analysis and predictions made by industry experts. Joe Rogan, who is renowned as a straightforward individual and analyst, called this fight as an extremely extravagant event involving a legendary fighter like Mike Tyson, whose outstanding skills and boxing prowess remain unrivaled to this day. Where he was and terrifying he was so fast and he would do angles and he was bobbing and weaving you couldn't hit him and he was just coming at you and he was young he was 20 years old at the time he, he was he couldn't be stopped 
no one had the solution. But it's, I look at fighters when they're in their absolute prime, like what, what did you, what have you ever seen that was better than this? And with Mike Tyson, I've never seen anybody better. I've never seen any fighter, even Ali in his prime, even Ali when he was Cassius Clay. I never saw anybody who looked like Mike Tyson in his prime. Being someone who recently interviewed Mike Tyson leading to this fight, Joe explained how age will not be a hindrance for Mike in this fight because after witnessing the tremendous growth that he has achieved in the last couple of months, the chances of him winning are greater than ever. Mike Tyson in his prime had been like reignited, whatever it was. I'm like, no, I need, I need a wider table. <laughs> I got, I was nervous in the room with him. Like you could tell he's ready to go. I don't give a f if he's 55. Like 55 in 2021 is not 55 from like 1988. It's not, it's not the same thing. Still. It's terrifying. It's, it's in terif not terrifying because he's 55. In terrifying. It's mm. a terrifying human. If he was 21 and he was hitting pads like that, I'd be like, holy shit. Mm. This kid's a killer. Mm. Iron Mike Tyson. The fact that he can still do that at yeah. 55. Along with his age, Mike's inactivity in the last couple of years has also been a major concern for the fans, but Joe seems to think otherwise. According to Joe, even though these concerns are valid, Mike has never been an inactive individual, so for him to shift back into the old mindset and shape isn't really a strenuous task. And you know, when you're looking at a lot of these videos, they're from months and months ago, and he's still training. So he's only got better. Yeah, he's getting it back. Muscle memory, right? But this is terrifying. Talking about the possibility and allegations of the fight being rigged and staged, Joe dismissed any such claims, stressing the fact that although Jake has been notorious for such moves, Mike as a fighter and individual will never lower himself to participate in such events, no matter the award promised to him. I think this fight is going to be a real full bore, 100% fight. It's not even an exhibition. Mm -hmm. It counts on their professional record, so it's a professional fight. Oh, okay. I'm going to watch the fight. We're all going to watch the fight. Yeah. I'm going to watch it. I mean, it's a brilliant move by Jake because like if he was going to fight anybody else people would watch but would the same amount of people watch no no meanwhile on the other hand Dana White who is the CEO of UFC and a close friend of Tyson seems to be evasive about the idea of the fight stating how though he commends the lucrative and innovative nature of these events he still can't wholeheartedly accept this fight due to the threat it might pose to Tyson at this age I don't know what do you guys think about it who gives a shit what I think? It's not my fight. Um, I, I love Mike Tyson, you know, personally as a friend, and he's one of my favorite athletes of all time. Um, I don't know. Let's let's see what he can go in there and put together a training camp and come in. And you know, I, I don't like to see guys fighting it. Uh, see a thirty-one year age difference during that fight, just you know. You know, you guys know what I think of that stuff. Being someone who is aware of what goes on behind these events, Dana applauded the intervention of platforms like Netflix and Prime in the game, commenting how with this new move, the fighters are going to get more autonomy and will be able to set their own terms for the first time ever. I think the Netflix should have gotten into live sports years ago. I think I think they're they're they're, uh, they're they're late to the game, but they are a force. They're a force, man. And and, and when you look at. Um, the amount of homes that they're in worldwide. Sharing some exciting news for combat fans all around the world, Dana also stated how with the entry into the new year, people will witness an increase in events like these if this Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul fight ends up being successful, which it most probably will. I can watch Reacher whenever I want to. I can watch it when I get home, I can watch it next week, I can, right? Live sports like this event tonight, you had to watch tonight. As all these massive streaming companies start to get bigger and bigger, they have to they have to be involved in live sports. Safe to say you'll be talking to them when your TV deal comes up? I'm sure we'll be talking to everybody. Thinking that Mike will persevere in this fight, Michael Jai White, who is a former professional fighter, stated that there is no chance for Mike to lose on the night of Nov 15th because the old veterans' mindset and attributes are just peerless. I can't see how Tyson doesn't land to his body at some point in the first round. I mean, when you get hit by somebody who's thrown that punch 
a million times. It's just different. Divulging into his opinion, Michael emphasized that the only way that a fighter can have the upper hand against Tyson is if they are equipped with tremendous experience and boxing IQ along with a larger physique to outmaneuver the comparatively smaller Tyson, which are things that Jake seems to lack. Jake is not of the size to give Mike a problem. Mike can be, you know, big guys would hold Mike, guys with long reach and that outweigh him. Yeah. Um, I think people that's Mike's weight with Mike's sense of center of gravity, I don't I don't think there's anything that's gonna stop him. The world joints have skills that Jake will never have, even at that at that age. Jake's got a punch. But see, Jake has fought really tiny guys in comparison to Keeping these specifications in mind, Michael dismissed Jake as a threat to Mike based on the fact that he still has a lot to learn in the sport, and for that, he should take the appropriate route and challenge those fighters who are compatible with him rather than jumping up to take on old champions like Mike. I got Mike Tyson. Really? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm sorry, I don't see how, how Jake pulls this off. Uh, I see Mike Tyson punching him in the body and I, I don't see how Jake stops that. I think Mike Tyson's a little too much for Jake Paul, personally. However, not mincing his words, continuing on his harsh onslaught directed towards Jake, Carl Frotch blasted Jake, calling him a fake and pretender who has only entered the sport for the sole reason of garnering more notoriety, even if that comes from taking on a prestigious figure like Mike Tyson. According to Carl, one thing that seems to vex the general public particularly is that even after flaunting these atrocious decisions, Jake demands respect from the community. He's at a low level. He can't call himself a professional boxer, which he he continues to try and do and um, listen I don't get wound up about it I know what he's doing he's in, he's in, the, he's in the business of making money and he knows how to make money fair play to him but um, is he taking himself serious, seriously as a professional boxer unfortunately I think he is and I think it's a f***ing disgrace because he's jumping in with a 58 year old Mike Tyson when he's only 26 year old himself Continuing on his harsh onslaught directed towards Jake, Carl added that even though he is not against the idea of making money and taking advantage of good deals, things like these and boxers like Jake Paul are only soiling the name of boxing and are ultimately portraying a twisted image of boxing to the younger generations, which is heinous. So what do I think of the fight? I think it's a disgrace. Listen, they're all making money. I've got no, I've got no problem with Jake Paul making money. He's got his teeny bopper demographic audience that buy into his bullshit. Yeah. I think he's the best thing since sliced bread, drinking that fucking poison. Mm. That prime bullshit yeah. in the drink, that's fucking horrible. But what a marketing genius that was. Yeah. I think it's more his brother than him. But still, the fight shouldn't be happening, and it's bad for both. He's useless. Who said Jake Paul's got power? It's like he's hitting him with a feather duster, like, you know, just flicking it in his face. It does make you question them wins he's had, where he's hit him with one shot and uh, they fell on the floor yeah, exactly, like, yeah, like they've been there, tasered. Yeah. Can you imagine that being my dream fight and my, my biggest payday? Fighting a, fighting a clown. <laughs> Jake Paul don't know what to do with himself when he's under pressure. Yeah. You know, he's on his back foot looking at the floor, yeah. probably closing his eyes. It's fair to say he's absolutely useless, isn't it? <laughs> Jake Paul. He can't fight, can he? I reckon looking at that, how many rounds do you think I need to beat Jake Paul? Seriously, two rounds or a round? One round. Yeah. Is that the end of Jake Paul now or what? is absolutely useless. According to Carl, even though this fight might do good numbers and will be talked about, this is not real boxing as it appears devoid of any authenticity and everything about it appears to be quite fake. Carl even added on how after looking at Mike and Jake's body language throughout countless promotional events, it almost appears as if this fight is scripted in a way to completely favor Jake. Well, I've said it many times before, Jake Paul cannot box. He's not a pugilist. He, he, he swings away, he's absolutely useless no. it's just a shame that it's, it's come to this yeah it'd be absolutely fantastic if Tyson goes in there and puts a whooping up on and lands a couple of shots and that's probably half the sell people are gonna buy it thinking oh what if Mike Tyson catches him but the reality is I don't think he's gonna be allowed to catch him I think it's gonna be a one-sided whooping and Jake Paul is gonna beat him probably in four or five rounds because Mike Tyson will get absolutely knackered and probably fall over Mike Tyson 
I think he's just going to be playing his role. In my, in my opinion, Mike Tyson's probably got the script because when I saw that press conference the other day, there was like a little bit of a shove by Tyson at the end, like a half-hearted shove. It was like, there was like nothing in it. Jake Paul kind of didn't know what to do. He was stood there, stern looking, not, not saying, I don't think he said anything, but it all just looked really contrived. It looked really fake. And Tyson gets a bit giddy and starts jumping around and smiling. He does a stupid little half-hearted push. And I mean, Jake Paul got booed, but I don't know. It's just, it's not even pantomime. It's worse than pantomime because for me, as a professional boxer, retired pro boxer. In the end, regardless of these conflicting views, both fighters are enthusiastic about this event as they landed at Texas. And with only a few days left, both Mike and Jake are now focusing on maintaining their composures and keeping a clear head, devoid of any negativity or pessimism which might linger in their heads and affect their eventual performance on fight night. This being said, what are your thoughts on this fight? Do you think that the recent concern raised by Eddie and other prominent figures in the game is valid and should be taken seriously? Or do you think that everything is according to plan and will prove to be beneficial for the sport? Make sure to tell us about your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to our channel.